Welcome to Around Kansas. I'm Deb Goodrich. And I'm Michelle Martin. And on this Friday fun day, we thought we would have some fun with words. I came across an article the other day that was talking about 15 cliches you should avoid. And I can't remember those, but we're going to talk about some others. And I have uh, the photo behind me today is my boyfriend, Bill. This is William Shakespeare. And I have been in love with him ever since, uh, I think ever since I heard my first sonnet, I've been in love with him. And behind me today, uh, I'm a historian. I have a huge pile of books. <laughs> and I'm sure in some of those books, there are some cliches or pages of purple prose that modern editors would say, delete, delete, delete. I'm sure. You know, growing up in um, the part of the world that I grew up in, in southwestern Virginia, you know, the, the Appalachian Mountains, um, probably some of our cliches may not have been as common around the rest of the country as they were with us. Um, I remember Grandpa Colson's favorite when he was talking about somebody stingy was he's tighter than Dick's hat band. I'm not sure exactly who Dick was, but apparently Dick was a pretty stingy guy, you know, and, uh, you know, if the good Lord will and then the creek don't rise, you know, which I, throughout the South, I think is, mm -hmm. is pretty popular, but all those things sprinkled, sprinkled into the conversation, you know, and I was home um, back in Virginia, North Carolina, a couple of weeks ago, and one of our old friends came in. He was a retired deputy, and I used to cover court um, for the newspaper and radio. And so, you know, all my friends were cops, crooks, lawyers, um, and uh, sometimes, again, the lines got a little blurry, but um, he was sitting there. We were reminiscing about the cops and the crooks and the lawyers that we had known. I wish I had recorded his language because it was so, so colorful. And, you know, that's what uh, the cliches, the similes, the metaphors are. They're all about making language colorful. And the reason I chose Shakespeare to be behind me is because I'll never forget uh, this one kid remarking, you know, I don't like Shakespeare. He's boring. You know, he loses all the, he uses all those cliches. Well, they weren't cliches until Shakespeare wrote them. Right. And then everybody copied Shakespeare and they became cliches. Well, you know, Deb, it's funny you bring up Shakespeare because I, I was in London in 2017. And of course, the cliches that they will have there or their sayings there are a little different, but some of them are a variation on ours. You know, for example, if you tell someone, if someone's getting upset, you say, don't get your panties, bun don't get your panties bunched up or don't get your panties in a wad. I don't think the British do it better. It's don't get your knickers in a twist. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds so much, it sounds refined and it sounds elegant when they say it. When we say it in America is don't get your panties in a wad, but in a twist sound better maybe if we said it with a british accent it would be better you know that that, that, that might, might help when when i moved to kansas and uh noel was small she was just uh, 18 months old and so i'd take her to the babysitter and some of the things i said the babysitter and the kids would look at me real funny and i was telling the babysitter one day how i had gotten upset with somebody and i said i was ill as a hornet and she's like, you were sick? And I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, I was mad. And she's like, what? You know, and she's like, ill is a hornet. And I realized that other people say mad is a hornet or, you know, something, but mm -hmm. no, we say ill is a hornet. And it, yeah, yeah it, didn't, it didn't translate well. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's interesting if you look, I mean, I like thinking about because I'm a historian and I'm a nerd, um, things like, you know, how many of our cliches have to do with anger or love or hate or time, you know, only time will tell, lost track of time, in the nick of time, in a jiffy, you're having the time of my life um, at the speed of light. I mean, I find it interesting to see how many of them um, 
relate to different categories. And, you know, lately my husband and I um, are both eating uh, a lot healthier and exercising more. And so when I hear someone say fit is a fiddle, when I actually think about the shape of a fiddle, I don't think about a fiddle as being very fit. Uh, when you think about what fitness really means. So yeah, there, it, it's really interesting. Well, Michelle, the fiddle for a girl is probably okay because you got yeah. that kind of hourglass, you know. For exactly. a guy, maybe not so great, but um, <laughs> you know, uh, one of the ones that uh, uh, we all used to, to say back home too, and I don't know if this, I, I've never found anybody else that said this, but my granny, when she thought something was outlandish or uh, outlandish, I guess, she'd say, well, that's a pretty looking out. And that's one I have never heard anywhere but the Appalachian Mountains. You know, that's a pretty looking out. And I'm not sure exactly what a pretty looking out was, but it was pretty outrageous. Well, you know, Deb, another one that also is got Southern connotations, but I, it's fascinating and should be fascinating to Kansans, given our territorial history. Um, I know several folks from Kentucky, Tennessee, um, you know, uh, in different parts of the South, that if something completely surprises or shocks them, they'll say, well, I'll be John Brown. That we grew up with that one. Yeah. yeah. We grew up with that one. I can recall my grandpa saying that many a day. So I don't know what the cliche is for we'll be right back, but we'll be right back. In 21, a trade route was opened from Missouri in the United States across prairies and mountains to Mexico. In 2021, we will mark 200 years of epic conflicts and grand adventures, larger than life personalities and sweeping landscapes. Join us on an historic journey. The Santa Fe Trail lives on. Find us on social media or santafetrail.org. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. Welcome back. We're talking about words, something that um, Michelle and I are very familiar with, as the books behind her would indicate. And as writers, you know, we're always using words and we're looking for new ways to use words. And one of my favorite books, um, I bought it, oh gosh, the first one I bought 30 years ago, I Hear America Talking. And it's about the evolution of phrases and words and it's just fantastic I think it's still in print I think you can still get it and I would, I would highly highly recommend it what would be your favorite book on words oh my gosh you know Deb it's hard for me because I'm I'm so enmeshed in writing my dissertation right now and so for me I almost feel like I'm on word overload a lot of the time yeah. Um, not just the program to create documents, but the words themselves. Um, so for me, it's really difficult. Um, but and I've been reading a lot of academic works and there's a book um, called Keywords. And Keywords talks about how different kinds of words take on different meanings and different symbolisms and or how their original meanings become contorted um, and change over time. Yeah. And so it kind of traces the history of certain kinds of words. And so 
that's been really useful. Um, I've used some of some examples of it in my dissertation um, because I have to look at language in part of right. my work. So um, I'm really I'm boring these days. I'm looking at academic stuff. Um, but what I really like, what I, what I really like, if I'm not too overloaded, is to read something from writers who really put words together well. And for mm -hmm. me, I, I go back to poetry quite often. Yeah. And I can't not go, I, I go back to William Butler Yeats. Yeah. You know, being, being of Irish ancestry, I go back to Yeats. Um, there's a rhythm to his writing, to his poetry. There's power in his words. He chooses them very carefully, but he chooses them for sound and emotion and effect. Yeah. And there's just that beautiful rhythm to them. And so I, I love anything by Yeats. Yeah, I love Yeats. And, um, you know, a more modern poet that I love because of how he uses words is E.E. E. Cummings. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, um, what is it? Up, up they floated with many bells down. So I, I can't quite get it right now, but oh my gosh, I love that poem. Mm -hmm. and I love how originally he puts together words and, you know, that's, again, coming from the part of the world I grew up in. Um, people put together words in pretty odd, mm -hmm. uh, odd ways. Like I remember being at the Galax Fiddlers Convention one time and the Fiddlers Convention would be, bring people from all over the country and all over the world. So we had all these hillbillies from back home. And then we had a bunch of guys who came from around Boston. And um, we met because the waitress in the restaurant could not understand what they were saying. And I ordered for them because, and it was hilarious. They could not understand them. And so we'd get together, you know, every year they'd come down. And so um, some of the guys from West Virginia and uh, Western Virginia there in Galax were playing with these guys from Boston. And they were playing fiddles. And the guy from West Virginia said, well, you got that tuned funny up. And they're looking at him like, what? What are you talking about? And another saying that would really, they just like, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, people in the South, and this is, I think, all over the South, really, will say, I'll swan or I'll swanee. And like, where I grew up, it would be Elt I Swanee. And I guess that's like, um, like people say, I declare, or I do declare, it'd be Elt I Swanee. And I was actually reading about that not long ago, because I love, like you do, looking at the, the history of words. And I can't remember now if that's Celtic or Gaelic or something, but it, 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 goes, it goes back a pretty good while. I, you know, Bill over here probably said, Elt, I swanee, you know, and he probably did it very dramatic. Elt. He did, I'm sure. Swanee. Yeah. You know, it, it had some flair to it. It had some drama to it. I bet Ophelia said that and they just scratched it out, you know, I bet. Yeah. Well, I She'd be the perfect one to say, Elt, I swanee, right before she drowned herself, you know. Exactly. I mean, what I want to know is this, why didn't Margaret Mitchell have Scarlett O'Hara saying that? I know. I know. Well, or Melanie. You know, Scarlett, or Melanie. Scarlett had more money. They probably didn't, <laughs> you know, it was probably the common people that said things like that. And uh, 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 maybe the the higher class people had, had different ways of saying it or, or Mammy slapped her when she said it or something, you know, said, don't talk like that. That sounds like poor people. That was probably it. Maybe that would have been a Belle Watling saying. Now that's, yeah, that's right. Belle probably said it. <laughs> exactly. Well, this has been fun. I hope you've had fun too. And if you got some, you know, original sayings or, or words that you think might be particular to your um, neck of the woods, um, that's a cliche, isn't it? Neck of the yes, woods. Yes, it is. <laughs> and, uh, then let us know, you know, share stuff with us because we, we love hearing what, what you're all about and what you're into. Isn't that right, Michelle? That's right. And, you know, when, if you're watching us on Facebook, you can always leave those cliches, those interesting turns of phrase in, our, in the comments 
Or if you are watching us on YouTube, you can do the same. Use that comment feature. Believe it or not, we actually do. When we have insomnia, we do take a look at all those comments that you leave for us and read them and enjoy them. And we thank you for your words that you leave us every week. You sure do. And we'll leave you with these words. I'm Deb Goodrich. And I'm Michelle Martin. And we will see you somewhere around, around Kansas. Kansas. Howdy. I'm Seth Hayes. And welcome to my hometown from then to now. Council Grove has a rich history, as deep as the prairie tall grass. Spend the day visiting 25 historic sites, or explore the unique shops and restaurants, or mosey out of town along the Santa Fe Trail. You all visit my hometown, Council Grove, in the heart of the Flint Hills. Okay, looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum, you're going to find some really interesting stuff like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. And we've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. We've got the Ray Pump Organ Collection. We're a little bee place with a great big story and we'd love to have you.